Hey guys, this is Deshaun Clark here. Uh, I just wanted to shoot this video in response to the LinkedIn post that was posted. SharePoint developers will soon lose their jobs if they continue to do this. Uh, that post uh, generated a lot of comments, a lot of feedback, which which I think was, was really great because it was great to get other folks' uh, perspectives on what they felt was, was happening in the industry and what they've seen on the day-to-day -day with working with SharePoint and some of those that actually worked in SharePoint in the cloud. I just wanted to shoot this quick follow-up video uh, just to let you know that the the uh, regardless of the title, and it did generate a lot. I, I think it was a catchy title. I think it was, you know, a good marketing title. Um, but I think, you know, regardless of the activity that was generated, please believe that it's not marketing hype. The warning is real. Uh, if you are a developer working with Full Trust Code, working with the server-side object model, you really need to consider uh, retooling and preparing yourself for e either, e even if you're working with SharePoint on-prem, you have to prepare yourself for SharePoint 2016. Uh, the new features are coming out, the new development model released by Microsoft, which really complements the add-in model. It just makes things a little bit more fluent and straightforward. Um, as well as uh, preparing for when your your business may or may not move to the cloud. Now, if your business does not move to the cloud, you would just have this skill set, and you can practice the same skill set, so that way if something ever happens to where you're no longer working with that client or that customer and you move on, you will be marketable because, you know, 85% or 60%, 70% uh, two or three years from now, uh, most of these SharePoint installations will be running in the cloud. Now, there, there's a couple of moves at Microsoft that's really kind of forcing this, right? Uh, one is that all of the updates and features, and they're moving to the cloud first. So SharePoint Online is going to be more advanced as far as feature-rich even than uh, the new release, SharePoint 2016. Um, another thing that uh, Microsoft is kind of forcing is that, you know, once you move to the cloud, you never have to upgrade SharePoint again which from most clients and most organizations, that's a slam dunk, right? I mean, I think the cost savings from not having to manage these services within their data center, um, the, I wouldn't say the IT folks. I mean, you know, some people look at the SharePoint admins, that role goes away. I think it's, I think it's different. I, I don't think that role goes away, but I think it's definitely different because even in the cloud, uh, out of the box, there's no way to, for an end user to create a site collection. Uh, I think managing users at the tenant level and all this other good stuff is going to be important. I think the cloud is a, is a different beast. SharePoint Online is a, is a much different uh, beast than uh, SharePoint on-prem. Of course, you have list libraries, user profiles, you know, even business connectivity services where external lists and all that other stuff is still in play. Uh, search is a very uh, major component. But I think from a, or from a or topology standpoint, uh, is is organized a little bit different, whereas on-prem you have, or you're used to as a SharePoint administrator, uh, web apps, and then under those web apps you have site collections, and under those you have sub-sites. You can control which site collection goes and what content database. You're dealing with content databases and, you know, the backup process and then the size of, you know, the um, the logging database or the analytics database that ca capture all that data. You may have auditing on or off, depends on, because it uses so much storage space. So, you know, all those considerations and all those ongoing maintenance items, those pretty much go away because Microsoft is managing that. And, uh, you know, you can enable auditing, but it's not that you have to back up the data. It's more so, so um, I, I think it becomes a storage question at that standpoint. So I think the, the, the work is a little bit different, but I think from a development standpoint, um, the new modern uh, stack, uh, technology stack, as far as, you know, Visual Studio Code, which is a different IDE than Visual Studio Enterprise, um, AngularJS framework, uh, the React framework, um, you know, TypeScript, Gulp, Yeoman, I mean, some, you know, all these other modern stacks that really kind of replace the SharePoint Visual Studio template that we're accustomed to when uh, coding and server side, and even some of the templates are available uh, when we actually code uh, via CSOM. Actually, that's not right. There, there are no templates available for CSOM, but there is the CSOM PNP uh, project library, uh, which really kind of helps a lot with that level of development. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think again, I think the warning is real. The, the you know in 
you know, I, I think it's, you know, you have to prepare yourself and get ready for this new model. Um, I think there's going to be a huge vacuum because all of the, the reality is all of, all SharePoint developers uh, may not just may not move to, you know, this new modern technology because it is JavaScript. And I think, you know, there is a there's a love hate, mostly hate, especially from a dot net or developer C sharp background uh, with JavaScript only because it's such a, a loose language and it's not, you know, type safe and you, you don't get the IntelliSense. There's no sense of compile. But I think, you know, they're trying to tighten it up from an industry standpoint with uh, TypeScript and, and all these other components. So, you know, definitely leave leave your comments. You know, I just wanted to do this follow-up because I thought, you know, it, one, I, I didn't realize that, you know, it would generate that many comments. Uh, I think the feedback was great. Uh, it came across, you know, all over the board, you know, many, you know, many different perspectives, backgrounds and that. So it was, it was a, a wonderful conversation. So see you on the uh, next video actually i think i think what i would do next will be a uh, a video on o365 i think it would be good to kind of take a tour uh so for those who who have not had an opportunity to get out there and browse around um i i can really share you know my experience and some of the gotchas uh you know the layouts and how you know it requires different administrators because one thing in o365 that um, is starting to become more and more apparent for me is that um, SharePoint is just one component of many because uh, when you get out there you have OneDrive which you know we know the DNA of that a OneDrive is SharePoint it's just a site collection for each and every user where each and every user get their own but then you have Exchange and then you have Skype for Business and now they're spinning off this other module called the Compliance Center um, and each one of these components, I mean, there are different administrative roles for for each one of these. So, you know, really trying to understand from an organization standpoint, where does the SharePoint admin fit? Um, how will developers be developing? Uh, and then this whole concept or notion of tenant, which is very similar to, uh, I think it's more in alignment with a SharePoint farm. Uh, and, you know, from an organization standpoint, will you have more than one tenant? Like I work with a client, they actually have three tenants. They have one for production, one for user accepting, and one for like a sandbox or playground. It does ne not necessarily match the different environments in the application lifecycle, as in dev, QA, UAT, potentially perf, or possibly sometimes perf in production. So it doesn't match that. Uh, but you know, you know, I spoke with you know other clients and uh, you know some of my other buddies that are working with O365. They just have a single tenant and they carve out you know different site collections to represent uh, the different environments from a life cycle. So you know it's a different beast, but you know maybe that's what I'll do in the next video. Just kind of do a tour uh, on O365. Uh, so that way you cut for those who haven't haven't seen it yet, uh, just kind of get an understanding of what's to come and how some organizations are using it. Okay, until the next video, take care.